How's it going, everybody? I'm here today playing Civilization 4. Now, Civilization 4 is probably my favorite game of all time. I played it a lot back in the day, and I'm still probably not that good at it. But in this one, I'm playing a scenario of the 1000 AD. I'm playing as Holy Roman. I'm going to try to take over pretty much all of Europe. Now, there are a couple of reasons for doing this. Holy Rome is in an ideal place. I have enemies that I can immediately attack and expand people who I don't who I don't have to worry about betraying as allies uh, such as the Vikings up north and the Byzantium over here to the south and east. Now there are a couple of mods that I'm running for this. Uh, they're very small ones. The bug mod right up here it uh, basically gives you more information about combat and stuff like that and the blue terrain mod which basically improves the textures of the game's terrain so not a whole lot not a whole lot of customization there but it really it adds some subtle and quite nice aesthetic touches to the game uh, but nothing that actually mods the base rules now my favorite mod for civilization 4 is the rise and fall of civilization and that one is a bit more complex and I think it would take longer for people to actually get into it. Uh, but still, it's a very it's easy enough to get into if you understand the base game. Anyway, let's get started. I'm fortifying the crossbowmen in that city. And I, I'm going to go down here at the foot of the tip of Italy. And I'm going to capture this city from Saladin with my knight. Hopefully, uh, what are the odds? 87, almost 90% odds. I should do it just fine. Now... It's important to remember that I have about, well, I have a couple anyway, free wins against barbarians. I'm playing on noble difficulty, which is the default for, you know, it puts you on even ground with the rest of the AIs. So I'm going to see if I can actually capture any of these barbarian cities. Because that's going to help me expand. That's going to help me a lot when it comes to expanding my territory here early on. Now we're probably going to want to use this archer to defend Syracuse once we capture it. Uh, turn the resources on. I usually run, I usually play with them on, and we're going to build the pasture and the pig resource right there. Now we currently have a galley over here in the Middle East because uh, we are uh, currently on the on involved with a crusade. It's 1000 A.D. And taking Jerusalem would be very good for us. So I'm going to unload these units along with my allies. And uh, I imagine I'll just keep the ship here and block trade. Uh, this crossbowman can stay in Rome. I want to make sure it's defended quite well. And then we're going to set this archer up to defend Danzig once we capture it. Uh, this worker... Let's see here. There should be some resource that needs improvement. I think we're just going to make uh, him build a road right there so we can easily move around our empire. And that ends the first turn. Okay, we have a vote here for the Apostate Palace. Uh, I, will pro I will vote for myself. It will give a small bonus to whoever you vote for. If you had voted for Justinian, it would have given me a slight bonus with him. But since we're probably going to end up declaring war on him in the end... I don't think it's going to be all that important to sort of suck up to him. The Russian Empire. Do I have... Uh, uh, there, He's annoyed. Uh, he will sign open borders, though, which is good. Because I actually need to get into the land here. I don't want to suffer or incur the penalty for attacking across the river for that city. I, I guess I could have gone through Byzantium Empire. Really, though, yeah, I, I do have a open borders with him. Open borders are generally not bad. Uh, I know some people don't like to sign open borders, but I generally do because it increases your trade routes. And oh, I actually have quite good odds against. It. I'm gonna bombard the city ones. Now, one danger here is that my allies would take the city, so I think maybe I should actually wait on this for a turn. Yeah, because I'm not going to be able to capture it myself. So we're going to wait here a turn for the knights. And uh, Louis the XIV the actually has his knight right here. So I have to capture this city this turn. Otherwise, he'll probably take it. 
So even though we had 63% odds, we won it anyway, likely because that was our free uh, win against the Barbarians. And this, this one's only going to go down as time goes on because the Archer defending Syracuse will you know, gain a greater and greater defense bonus. So we're going to take a risk on this. It's 80%. And we captured that city as well, so that's quite, that's a nice expansion there. Now we get to choose a research. Uh, let's take a look at the big picture ones. I'm not sure which researches I currently have, uh, but generally you want to push ahead with something that's going to increase our military power because we're going to be focusing on uh, conquest. Civil service likely would be the best because it leads us to nationalism and then military tradition, which will give us cavalry eventually what would i like to build in uh the city hmm we recommend the oracle now there are a few very useful buildings i'm going to check to see if this has, city has in the granary the barracks and the library yeah all those are very important the only other one is the courthouse i mean if you're going to be expanding but right now I'm not paying much in maintenance, and this is my capital. I'm going to obviously be moving that probably down to Rome. Uh, one of the big problems I'm going to have here is uh, preventing the city from flipping to France because there is a high amount of French nationality in the city. So really I should probably look at cultural buildings. And I'm probably going to go with the Oracle here. I might lose out on that because I'm actually playing on Noble. I might lose it out to somebody else, but... I think it'll be worth it if I do actually manage to build it in time. It's going to give me a great boost to culture and will probably help me avoid having to declare war on France early on to get my city back. I just want to check here to make sure this is Rome. It's probably going to be my powerhouse. Uh, yeah, there's generally a lot of production here around here in Rome. So I probably want to move my capital here. And I'll take 14 turns. Hmm. Maybe something more important to build before that. Yes, barracks. Barracks should always be built before any more extravagant stuff. What do we have in this city? Castle, Granary, Rathus. We're going to build a library and a barracks. So we're going to build the barracks first in Salzburg. And then in the captured city of Danzig, we're going to build a monument to get some culture going. And the same goes for Syracuse that we also recently captured this turn. So that ends turn two. So the Apostolic Palace election results are in, and the winner is, of course, well, Justinian I is the leading candidate. I didn't expect many people to vote for me, but surprisingly enough, a few of them did. So my knight has earned a promotion, and knights don't have uh, withdrawal, natural withdrawal odds. They will want to upgrade them more, but I'm going to instead give them this knight the combat one promotion, which will give them 10% strength, which is always a nice little boost. Now, unfortunately, England captured uh, Jerusalem. Now, I'm not feeling bad about this because the odds are I wouldn't be able to take it anyway because uh, catapults can't actually capture cities. They can't defeat units, and I only had one knight. So I might just be waiting until Saladin comes along and takes the city back because uh, I think he will. It's going to be very hard for England to hold this, especially with a knight that weak. And I'm thinking we're probably going to be able to take it back in a couple of turns. But I, I don't want Saladin attacking me before that happens. Same goes for this knight. I'm going to give him a combat one promotion. And then we can actually... Our archers are on the way there. We're going to actually send these knights over to uh, Visigard. Visegrad? I apologize if I'm mispronouncing any names of these cities because I'm not all that familiar with their pronunciations course send those archers down to Syracuse so I think I'm gonna wait with these Knights of course they're gaining the swordsmen in the city are continuing to gain a fortification bonus so I probably should attack now but the problem is if I lose I won't be able to back it up with anything and they'll likely be healed before I actually manage to capture it it's a gamble I'm gonna have to take and I won. Okay, that's good. One more turn. I finished the pig pasture. And now let's take a look at our available civics. So hereditary rule is going to be the best form of government we have. Uh, vassalage is going to be the best form of legal system. 
uh, serf dumb. I think slavery is actually going to be better for us, especially in this part of the game, because we can use it to whip. Well, then again, I ha I'm going to have to do a lot of improvements here, and I wouldn't have to suffer any revolution for it, because I'd probably want to adopt theocracy in the same turn, because I'm going to be more militaristic. So I think we're going to go with slavery and theocracy. One turn for revolution. So we didn't get any research from that turn. That was the third turn. We didn't produce any research and our buildings didn't. And Justinian just captured Visegrad, which is unfortunate for us because that was a city that would have been quite useful. But, you know, we're going to be declaring war on the Byzantines, the, Byzant the Byzantine Empire soon enough. So where do we go from here? You know, actually, Russia might be easier to take over at first. Or uh, Ragnar. Hmm. A lot of options here. Really. But anyway, we have a worker available here. And I'm going to be building a pig pasture on that resource right there next to Salzburg. These knights. See, now the problem is... Justinian has a unique unit that has an advantage over my knights. Yes, I definitely want to hold off on attacking him until I get the upgraded knight. The Crucier, I believe it is. I've completed my road here. This wheat doesn't have a road, and I need a road to connect it to my resource. My resources, I should say. Fortify those archers in Syracuse. Syracuse. A little bit worried about this city. I don't think I'll be able to finish the Oracle in time. Paris, you know, actually Louis might be a better pr player to attack. It ends turn three. Interestingly enough, Saladin has not taken Jerusalem back, which I'm a little bit interested as to why. I mean, I know he has a hard time playing a deity because that's what the computer was set up to play at for that, that civilization in this scenario. Hmm. Yeah, it's going to be easy to take Russia. So I probably should do that next. I mean, he, his defense is in his capital. He only has an archer. So that definitely looks like the way forward for me. And if I recall correctly, I'm not going to be suffering. Actually, Saladin Cairo has been captured by the Byzantine Empire now. I've never seen Saladin do this badly before this early in the game. I was going to look at Russia. Who likes Russia? Because I don't want to... Uh, cautious. Isabel likes. Okay. Both of them. Actually, a lot of people like Peter. So I'm going to be incurring a diplomatic penalty with all those if I declare war on Russia. But I think that is the logical next step because I failed to take Visegrad and I also failed to take um, Jerusalem, which is really going to be bad because Jerusalem would give you it gives you a lot of money, which is definitely going to make uh, England a serious competitor in this scenario now for me, because they're going to have a, the coin to bankroll uh, a lot of research. That ends that. Well, we're on turn what now? I keep looking in the wrong place because I usually don't bother with this. Turn six. Yet again. Peter has some really easy cities to target here. His worst so far seems to be a uh, horse archer. I'm going to move these units in place and then sort of take it in one fell swoop. So I constructed a barracks in Rome. Now, unfortunately, I've noticed that apparently Saladin is going to be harassing me by sea. Now, I would like to wait until I have caravels before actually building ships to counter them. The barracks, granary, and library. So all the important buildings are built. And we're not going to be getting exper well, we're not going to be getting a bonus for building any of these cities anymore, given the fact that I switched over to Theocracy as a civic. So honestly I should probably be producing more units. I could produce my unique unit. The replacement for the pikemen. That would probably be the best idea. I don't have any pikemen yet, and it, the, the Byzantiums, they have a lot of pikemen and knights. 
Yeah, Saladin is definitely blockading my city. 